Hi, my name is Sangay Chafel. I've been out of the country for the last 17 years, and now that I'm back, I want to rediscover my own country. Paro is a historic Dzongkhag with many sacred sites and historical buildings. They are scattered throughout the area. In addition, Paro Valley is wide and verdant. Paro is recognized as one of the most beautiful Dzongkhag in all Bhutan. So behind me is the famous Rinpung Dzong. It was constructed in 1646. It is also known as the Dzong of Precious Jewels. Today, it houses the Royal Court of Justice and it's also the headquarters of the administrative offices. It also boasts the famous Baro Techu. One such historic site lies in ruins and almost forgotten with time. Yet, this particular site has played a key role in our history. I'm heading there today to revisit our history. I'm on my way to Drukyal Zong. It's about 15 kilometers. It's a long way, but it's definitely worth it because Drukyal Zong is one of the most famous fortresses. Drukyal Zong is located in the upper Paro Valley. The Zong was built by Zhebdrung around the late 1640s. So finally here at the base of Drukyal Zong, after 15 kilometers of riding, finally here. And I can't wait to go inside. Drugil was one of the four principal drazongs, which means defense fortress. It was built mainly for the purpose of defense from the oncoming invasion from the north. And I can imagine the Tibetan force trying to hike up here before even getting up there, get shot by an arrow. Today, what's left behind are the ruins of these giant walls, huge wooden beams, and broken watchtowers that was once a glorious defense fortress that watched over the entire Paro Valley. Now this is the fortress. I guess there used to be a big tunnel going up this way. Connecting it to this. It's almost like a watchtower. I can almost imagine the Bhutanese soldiers just lurking, just watching for enemies to come. And every time they see it, with a bow and arrow. It's quite crazy. These tunnels are amazing. These tunnels connect to like towers, the watchtowers. And I can almost imagine the soldiers back during the time of the battles creeping through here, hidden away from the enemy because it encloses. You could get food, medicine, water, all safely. You could bring it up and down the tunnel without the enemy even noticing. So this is quite remarkable. Ooh. 
During the glory days, Drukyalzong, being a strong fortified fortress, fought off many invasions from the north. It was then that the Zong was built to commemorate the victory of the Bhutanese over the allied Tibetan Mongolian forces. I can imagine these watchtower located at a strategic location, all connected by these fortified tunnels, guarded by soldiers covered with armor from the head to toe, giving it a larger than life aura. It must have been so grand and impenetrable. So this is the main courtyard of this mighty, mighty Drukyal Zong. Drukyal Zong actually means the fortress of victorious Drukpa. In the same courtyard, a small butterlime spilled over and set this Zong on fire. But if you look at these ruins, you still feel this aura of this patriotic, this victorious fortress that withstood so many invasions from Tibet and Mongolia. One feels truly, truly lucky to have seen this. This is amazing. On a lighter note, a few kilometers away from Drugyal Zong is where Drugyal Lower Secondary School is located. This school is quite special because they provide education for the hearing impaired students. I'm heading there to meet a talented young boy. So I'm here at the Deaf Educational Unit under Drukya Lower Secondary School. This is Namge and he's 16 years old. He loves painting. Namge is from Purbana village in Paro Dzongka. Every day, Namge starts his day at 8 in the morning. gets dressed and off he goes to his wonderful school. The Deaf Education Unit under Drukyalor Secondary School was established in 2003 and was inaugurated by Her Majesty Ashi Tsiring Pem Wongchuk in 2007. As a result of few passionate and dedicated teachers, this school runs like a well-oiled machine. The school now has about 60 students in their roster. In this school, the students learn history, social studies, science, math, and English, which happens to be Namge's favorite subject, besides his love for painting.
What makes the Deaf Education Unit so special is that they not only provide their students with formal education, but also intensive training on tailoring, designing, and wood carving. This school really equips their student to go out in the world and become a productive citizen. Namge is quite an exceptional student. He seems to be good at everything. He is even great in playing football. It was so awesome to have met Namge, who loves his school and is happy and enjoying his youth. I'm really glad to meet Namge Wanchu. He's only 16, the school is teaching him everything, and I really hope it leads him to a path where he could be an artist in the future. I wish Namge much success in his future. Today, I'm visiting one of the most holiest sites in our country. I have seen pictures and heard many stories about this sacred place. I'm quite excited, nervous, and scared all at the same time. I want to see if I can get, get all the way up to Parathaksan. But it seems a little bit more difficult than, than what I thought. And this is, you could definitely not do it. I think I'm just gonna keep my bicycle here. Venezuela, Lebe. I think I'm gonna buy a walking stick because I think this gentleman is selling a walking walking stick. Kadim chibola. Walking stick. Hola. Can you mola? Yeah, last la. Ah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Ani nala. Ba, dingi do mare la. Dingi ba sha. Ola. Tobla. Last la, can you la? So I'm definitely glad I left my bicycle down at the base because bicycling up this way it's going to be really difficult, I think. Plus I'll be missing out all these beautiful religious texts on the rocks. It's my first time going up to Taksung. It's gonna be about two more hours hike up. I'm really excited. Taksung literally translates to the tiger's nest. The sun is right on top of my head. This precarious location was discovered by the great Guru Rinpoche in 747 A.D. Oh, wow. Daksung Monastery was constructed in the 1960s and it was once damaged by the elements of fire. Since its reconstruction and renovations, it has now become a popular sacred site in Bhutan. It's a lot bigger than, than I thought. I'm just gonna enjoy the view in silence. I can only imagine how they built this. It must have been so difficult back in those days, trying to bring up all the logs and stones up there and build it right by the cliff. It's definitely got to be in some sort of world wonder, along with the pyramids of Giza, the Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, Taj Mahal, Porotaksan should be one of them because it is quite a wonder. In the 8th century, it is believed that Guru Rinpoche himself came here on a flying tigress. How cool is that? It is also believed 
that people should come here and visit this holy, holy site at least once in their lifetime. I'm quite lucky that I get to go visit Parataksang. Taksung Monastery is precariously perched on the edge of a 1,200 meter cliff and for me, it has become the unofficial symbol of Bhutan because of its location and its unbelievable beauty. Wow, it really is precariously perched on the side of a cliff. Even the path leading to the Taksung is quite scary. As you notice, I'm holding on to the handles and you really need to be careful around here. This is nothing compared to the past. This very path was 10 times smaller and people had to literally climb by the side of the cliff. One misstep and it was all over. It was total cliffhanger. Long staircase. Almost like stairways to heaven. I believe that to achieve anything great, one must suffer a great deal, and to have reached Taksung Monastery in itself is an achievement. It is truly a humbling experience. But if this doesn't humble a man, I don't know what will. Almost there. Almost. It's going to be a great reward to have been actually physically here in Daksang. So after three hours of hiking, I'm finally here at the base of Parathaksang. Behind me is the main monastery and this is the staircase leading up to it. Beyond this point, cameras are not allowed, which is rightfully so because I think the monastery is way too sacred for, for it to be shown on camera. It's better that you come here personally. Well, I'm going up there to give my offering. I got my incense and I got my margarine for the butter lamps. Guru Rinpoche is believed to be the second Buddha and on his second visit to Bhutan, it is said that the great guru meditated in one of the 13 hanging caves that make up the Taksung location. He meditated there to bring peace for the Paro Valley. Today, the main cave where the great guru meditated is opened only once a year for the general public. So I've just visited all the holy temples here in the main monastery in Paro Thaksung, and it truly is a wonderful place. What really stood out for me was the statue of Guru Rinpoche, one of the formations that he took called Dorji Dolo. It's quite monstrous and he's riding this tigress which really sort of touched my heart. It's given me a newfound energy that I've never felt before. So before I leave Taksung, I'm going to hang up my lungda to spread the message of peace. It is unreal that in a world filled with violence and war that a place like Taksung exists. Nevertheless, in my country, and its sole message is to spread hope for a peaceful world. And I'm only hoping we can totally have peace on earth. So after an arduous trip from the holy Taksung Monastery, one of the best ways to relax is Dotso, which literally means cooked rocks. 
Dozo is a familiar sight throughout Baro Dzongkok. It is also referred to as Menchu because people believe it to have medicinal attributes. I, I made fire! So that fire is really going, but it takes about four hours for these rocks to get piping red hot and that's when it's ready. So in the meantime, I'm gonna cook myself something special for dinner. So that special dish I'm gonna be making is asparagus. Wow, you guys must have been waiting for a long time. Um, I'm yes. sure you guys been really So after a hard day's work, out. it is right. nice to spend some Don't quality time Don't with my crew please. and really enjoy know. good food. So the rocks in the middle are quite ready. Ugh. That's a heavy one. Now this is the life. Our National Museum also makes its home in Paro. A former watchtower, Tazong, is now converted to a museum filled with rich artifacts. So I'm in front of our national museum, the Tazong, and this is Kenpo Punso Tashi. So how long have you been a director here in Tazong? Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years, that's a long time. Right? Yes, yes, one decade. One decade, that's yeah. right. Right. So Tazong, being a, our national museum, right, it's, it's got a very uh, huge significance culturally and historically. Right? How important for our youth? Right? I think because uh, the national, national Museum is the source of history and culture of Bhutan. So that's why I think it's very important, special to the youngsters, uh, the young minds like you, very dynamic youngsters are. Mm -hmm. So because if they really want to become wiser, and enlightened and civilized youngsters of the citizen of Bhutan. Right. So uh, they should come to the National Museum right. because since National Museum is the source of history and culture, that if you learn more history and you become wiser, the more you learn a culture, you become civilized. So that's the two reasons why the National Museum is very important to the youngsters or youth people. The entrance to the museum is on the fourth floor and once inside, it is a feast for the eyes. The museum holds artifacts from as early as prehistoric times to modern Bhutan. The oldest artifacts that the National Museum of Bhutan holds are the meteorite rocks. They call it Namcha Tari because it literally translates to weapon of the gods. It dates back to the prehistoric time about 4,700 years ago. This is quite amazing. These are stone vessels from the 19th century. It also houses the biggest religious mask in Bhutan. So the sixth floor in the museum holds some of the most unique stamps. Here we have scented rose stamps from the 1973 and it is believed you could actually smell the rose. I'm gonna try to smell it. I think one of the most important artifacts that the museum holds is on the fourth floor of the museum, is the Constitution of Bhutan. It reads here, the Constitution of Kingdom of Bhutan comprises of 35 articles which was drafted with a single-minded focus 
that attach the highest importance to creating a democratic political system that is best suited to Bhutan. It was His Majesty Jigme Singh Wangchu's vision to hand over the reign of the country to his people, and the constitution was just a step towards fulfilling this noble dream. One particular section of the museum is dedicated for the great treasure discoverer and a great craftsman there is in Pema Lingpa, such as this magic dagger discovered by the great Therathan. This is one of the most unique, unique artifacts that I found in the museum. It's actually an artifact that measures time. The museum also displays some of the most diverse animal species in Bhutan. a warrior with his shield and his button, the sword. This section here I'm sure you guys will all enjoy because this is the section of bow and arrow. Now today bow and arrow is just a leisure time activity where you go and have fun. But long time ago, during our ancestors time, it was used for either hunting or defending from oncoming enemies. This was the dark dungeons where all the prisoners were kept. Back in the day, they were actually thrown from up there. It's quite scary here. I wouldn't want to be a prisoner here. No way. So I'm getting out. So that was our National Museum. There's so many artifacts. You can learn so much. I learned so much. It truly is a wonderful museum. If you ever get a chance to come here and see it for yourself, I definitely recommend it. Baro happens to be one of the most fertile Zongkug in Bhutan. What makes Baro really special is the villages and the people from these villages. Baro is also famous for its varieties of rice. It is summer and it's rice plantation season. <laughs> Most villages have already started with planting rice. People are very busy working in the fields all day. But I have heard of a special village called Isuna, where the rice plantation has just started. So I'm on my way to Isuna. Isuna is about 13 kilometers from the main town of Baro. It is one of the few villages in Baro that still follows the traditional way of planting rice. So this is Amdoji Wamo. She's collecting rice saplings to be planted tomorrow. So I'm going to help her a bit. Amanga chi rubjing emare tuga. Chi rubjing esi. Lasla. So what, you, what they do is get the dirt off the roots, make it into a bundle, and then wrap it, then tie it with one of these. Spin it. So these rice saplings is actually planted during the first month of the Bhutanese calendar, which is February, they plant it and then they get it ready to this, about this height, and then they plant the rice. Nasla Makarinchela. Nasla. La Sola. I 
I think I can finally see the villagers. They've already started plowing the traditional way with an ox. So now it's time to get down and dirty. So this is rice plantation. Beautiful song. So that's really hard work. So I'm going to let the ladies finish uh, planting the rest of the rice. The rice gets harvested by the time it's October, and that's when you could enjoy the delicious red rice. It's Suna village. It's a beautiful village. A place covered with the color of the greenest of the green, providing the people with such bountiful treats distinctive smiles in the faces of the villagers. Mystical places that hangs in the skies. Oh, how Baro is filled with the riches of the past. The kaleidoscope of history proudly displayed in the National Museum. The wonders of Tuxing Monastery radiates with the message of peace. Drogyal Zong evokes the thought of patriotism. The unusual tranquility of Isuna village. So as I take in what Isuna village has to offer, I think to myself, although it is tough work, I'm really enjoying the beautiful songs of the field. It has a certain sense of tranquility. When one works hard, one can truly proudly enjoy the fruits of one's labor. So until next time in another Zonkug, goodbye.